Hey guys, Bob here from Raw Strength and Muscle, and today we are going to talk about the diet and supplements that I am using to lose 30 pounds in 12 weeks because that's a very common question that I've gotten. Not gonna talk about the workout, that will be a separate video. This is just gonna be how I did it, diets and subs. And shout out to anybody who got that reference. Anyway, uh, so, the diet that I am using, as every diet that I use, is going to be several feedings per day, okay? And it is going to be high protein in every single feeding. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that means. First of all, the, um, you always have to have protein because you need protein just to be healthy. I mean, just like to live, you need to have protein. To, you know, your organs are breaking down, they need to be repaired. Cells are broken down, they need to be repaired. You need your essential fatty acids, your essential amino acids, okay? Protein in every meal. If you are trying to lose weight, you need actually even more protein because you want to lose fat, not muscle, so you need to keep your body from going into a catabolic state. Uh, you know, positive nitrogen balance, which means basically you always have protein in your body digesting at all times during the day, means you are going to be in an anabolic muscle building, or at least muscle maintaining state, as opposed to a catabolic or, you know, muscle burning state. Um, every time that you eat protein, you actually initiate muscle protein synthesis, which is where your body synthesizes muscle from the protein you eat. So if you eat one meal a day, that means the whole day you're in a negative nitrogen balance, okay? You don't have protein going through your body. It means you're also you're a catabolic all day. And it means one time a day you are spiking uh, muscle protein synthesis by eating a meal of protein. Now, if you do that more often, you are spending more of the time during the day in a positive nitrogen balance, which means that you know, you're just anabolic as opposed to catabolic longer. And the more often you eat, the more often you are spiking muscle protein synthesis. So the more often that you actually have an opportunity to uh, build muscle, okay? Uh, you cannot eat every five minutes and think that that's going to spike muscle protein synthesis because it lasts for a couple hours. So the idea is you know, at least two hours between feedings. I eat in general every three hours, okay? So protein every three hours. Now, you cannot live from protein alone, so I also add in fat, okay? Anybody who's followed any of my low-carb cutting and bulking plans, you will know that I always have protein at the base, and if I want to bulk up or maintain my weight and maintain my size, then I just go ahead and add in a certain amount of fat, which increases the calories, okay? If I wanna lean out, I decrease the fat, which decreases the calories. But the bottom line is, I am always going to be eating protein and fat as I need it, okay? I usually do not eat carbs at all. Um, I feel better without carbs. Like I said, essential amino acids, protein, essential fatty acids, fat, you need both. You do not need carbs. But when I am doing a workout like I am right now, okay, where I am doing heavy-weighted calisthenics, don't need carbs for that, I'm fine. Built a lot of muscle, a lot of strength without carbs on that program. I'm doing part of that workout plus part of an explosive cardio interval workout. And I don't feel like I get the most out of those explosive intervals if I am not taking a little bit of carbs pre and post workout, okay? So those are basically the variables. Protein all day, every three hours, fat as I need it, okay, for my essential fatty acids and also just for calories, energy, et cetera, and then carbs around my workout. So what does a day look like for me right now? Okay, I wake up first thing in the morning and I drink whey protein with dextrose powder. Whey protein is something I usually do not use, okay? Um, it goes into your body quickly, it goes out of your body quickly. So it does spike muscle protein synthesis, but since it's out of your body so quickly, it doesn't maintain a positive nitrogen balance for a long time. So I mean, after maybe an hour or so, it's actually out of your system. And if you wait three hours in between meals, that's not the best scenario, okay? However, when I wake up in the morning, I obviously haven't eaten all night, so I want to get some protein in my body quick, 
whey proteins the quickest. Another thing is I am taking this pre-workout, which means I want to have the protein in my body really quickly because I drink my protein with my dextrose, get to, into the gym, so I'm working out like probably about half an hour after I actually drink my shake. So I need something that's gonna go into my body quickly. Same thing with dextrose, okay? I already said with the dextrose, with the carbs, that I need carbs in my body when I'm doing these workouts, okay? And since I do not take carbs all day, I need something that's gonna go in and fill my muscle glycogen, okay, my carb stores and my muscles as quickly as possible. Sucrose, table sugar, fructose, fruit sugar, those things tend to go into your liver, fill liver glycogen first, and then your muscle glycogen. Liver is also where you make ketones. So that's the last place. I don't use my liver when I'm like doing weighted pull-ups, okay? So I don't really need the liver to be filled with glycogen. Also, like I said, I wanna be in ketosis as much as possible. So the last thing I want is my liver to be full of, of um, glycogen, okay? Dextrose goes basically straight into your muscles. It doesn't really go to your liver as much as it goes into your muscles. So it's the opposite of sucrose and fructose, okay? Drinking it allows me to get it into my body very quickly. Once again, drink it, 30 minutes later, I'm actually working out, okay? Um, so, uh, and another thing is obviously I'm drinking this because if I were to eat something, why do I take carbs pre-workout to serve me during the workout if I'm eating food and chewing it, it has to be digested and it takes a long time to eat and blah, 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 blah. And then I go to the work, go to the gym and I got this brick in my stomach and it takes like two, three hours for it to be digested and for me to actually use it. I might as well not take any carbs at all, okay? So like I said, liquid, protein, dextrose, that's it. Makes no sense for me to take in fat because what also fat would slow digestion. Uh, if I were to mix fat in with my whey protein, my dextrose, why am I getting the fastest carb, the fastest protein, mixing it with water so I don't have to digest it, and then slowing it down by taking in fat. Another thing is when you take the dextrose, it will spike your insulin, okay? Not necessarily a bad thing, okay? Usually it is, but in certain cases, it's not bad. It helps you absorb things into your body, okay? It's a storage uh, hormone, okay, insulin. The problem is, if you take fat, the fat is also easily stored. Sugar, insulin stores things well. Fat is stored well. So you're combining fat, which is stored as fat easily, with sugar, which stores fat easily, or any nutrient, okay? So it's not what, something you wanna do. Like I said, fat would slow it down, plus fat would cause the fat that you take to be uh, stored in your body. So pre-workout, post-workout, pure, fast protein, pure, fast, uh, carbs, okay? I do my workout and I feel like a wet towel that's been wrung out and is completely dry, okay? Just completely bone dries how my body feels. All my carbs are depleted. So immediately after the workout, I drink the same shake, okay? I get some whey protein in and I get some dextrose in, okay? Protein and carbs, fast protein, fast carbs, no fat, quickly digested, the insulin is spiked, which helps store, for instance, the protein. But like I said, it doesn't push fat into my muscles because I don't have any fat pre or post-workout. Post-workout shake, I also have creatine and glutamine, okay? Creatine is something that, once again, I feel is excellent if you are doing high-intensity work, okay? Um, you know, I used it years ago because in the 90s, it was like, you drink this and it goes into your muscles and absorbs water and makes you bigger. And it was like a, an aesthetic thing. It makes you look bigger, okay? Because you store water intramuscularly, not subcutaneously, not water under your skin, but inside your muscles so you look full. And I'm like, why would I do that if the moment that I stop taking creatine, I go urinate, the God's whole creatine's out of my body, the water's out of my body, and I'm the same way I was before. So I didn't use creatine for years. But then people started talking about energy production, and one time I was doing a lot of sprints, okay? I would do like 100 meters, walk back, 100 meters, walk back, or hill sprints or whatever. So 
I started doing that and I just at the same time happened to be trying out creatine again and I basically forgot that I was using creatine but after a few days my sprints got much more explosive. I felt much stronger. This anaerobic energy I had was much better and it wasn't because I was getting more fit because I know what it's like to start out sprinting and kind of suck and then like start sprinting and really feel it, really feel as though like, you know, I'm in shape. But this was something different. This wasn't just me getting in better shape. This was an actual noticeable effect from the creatine. So like I said, if you're doing plyometrics or intervals or you know, really hard cardio for a short amount of time and then taking a break and hitting it again, creatine really helps. You do not need to take it pre or post workout because it's something that builds up in your body. You need like several days where it builds up in your body. Then, at, then you'll start to feel the effects. So you don't necessarily have to take it at a particular time. I take it post-workout because first of all, why not? Okay, that's a time of the day. Second, I take it uh, post-workout because the dextrose spikes my insulin, which is like I said, it stores things in your body. So it kind of pushes the uh, creatine into your body. Okay, it's a really good thing. Uh, it's a good time to take it then. As a matter of fact, when I was a kid, people were saying, take it with grape juice because the insulin spike will help you get more of an effect or store the creatine more easily. This is the same thing. It's just more efficient using glucose, which is what dextrose basically is, as opposed to fructose, which is what um, like grape juice, orange juice, something like that is. Okay. Glutamine, what's the glutamine for? The glutamine is in my uh, post-workout shake because it helps you with recovery, okay? This is something, I'm not gonna say it's controversial because it's been proven that it works, but a lot of people don't think it really works for them. You're not working out and you're not dieting hard enough, okay? Quite simply, you know, it would be like if I were to get somebody you know, who lives in a trailer park somewhere, a multi-million dollar like patent attorney, like, well, I'm not making any more money with a multi-million dollar patent attorney. Yeah, you're also not really doing shit. You're just kind of like hanging out in the trailer park. So that doesn't mean that a patent attorney is not a good thing to have if you are actually pushing yourself to the limits and building a business, okay? Same thing here. You know, if you're not busting your ass, you're gonna recover fine. I mean, most people don't do anything in the gym. They do a couple lateral raises, you know, to build their lats and, you know, a couple, you know, biceps curls to, you know, to lose fat in their gut. And I, they don't know what they're doing. They don't work hard. They don't work consistently. So of course they're not gonna notice the effect if their only effect is that the glutamine helps you recover. Recover from what? Like sitting on your ass, on, watching chicks in the gym or something? Like what do you need help recovering from? But if you are pushing yourself, especially if you're in some kind of a caloric restriction, like you're trying to get shredded quick, or right now, like I'm in a slight caloric deficit, but I'm still lifting very heavy and I'm still doing heavy, heavy, heavy cardio. So it's really, you know, it's kind of hard. I'm not eating a lot of food to like help my body recover. Okay, I'm eating a lot of protein, as much food as I need, but the glutamine in this situation really helps me recover. Like I said, hard, hard work and a caloric deficit, definitely I noticed that the glutamine helps me, okay? So that's pre, post workout, okay? Uh, I don't follow the three hour rule between them. I just drink my shake. Like I said, 20, 30 minutes later, I'm actually working out in the gym. Maybe an hour after that, I'm done with my workout, drink my next shake. So it's like one and a half to two hours in between those two shakes. Like I said, it, you spike your uh, muscle protein synthesis very quickly and you get a positive nitrogen balance from the whey, but it fades away really quickly. So an hour to two hours is really a good time to space out your whey protein shakes, okay? Pre and post workout at least. Then when I'm done with my post workout shake, about an hour later, I have my first solid meal. Now, why do I wait an hour? First of all, if I just had my, my post-workout shake and my muscle protein synthesis is spiked and you know, positive nitrogen balance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, what do I need more food for, first of all? Second, I add in fat in all of my solid meals. So, like I said before, I don't wanna spike my insulin with the dextrose and then immediately eat a fatty meal, which helps store the fat as body fat. 
don't want to do that. So at least an hour in between my post-workout shake and my first solid meal, which includes fat. So the way I do this, you know, I basically just come out of the gym, sit in my car, drink my uh, post-workout shake, and um, I go ahead and uh, drive home, take a shower, make my breakfast, and then I eat my breakfast. This is about an hour time, okay? Um, and I eat four solid meals a day. So pre-workout shake, post-workout shake, four solid meals a day, okay? So we're up to six meals now. What are those meals? I personally like chicken because it's a very clean protein, okay? I enjoy eating it, like I could eat it all day. I'm fine with it, no problem. I never get tired of it. 200 grams is raw is like 47 grams of protein, zero carbs, three grams of fat. So it's like perfectly pure protein. Now, I did say that I do add in some fat. So what I'll do is put in like an ounce, 28 grams of almonds, which is about 160 calories, you know, uh, mostly fat. So that's what I'll basically eat for my next uh, four meals, okay? Chicken and some kind of nuts, okay? Um, you could eat another type of food if you want, but like I said, it really works best for me to eat the chicken and then to add the nuts in as I need some more uh, fat. You could do the same thing with tuna if you're the kind of person who likes eating tuna. Tuna is practically pure protein. Two cans is also like, um, it's also like 50 grams of protein, give or take, and like practically no carbs or fat. You could do that and you could add in some natural mayonnaise as a fat source, um, you know, whatever. Uh, so like I said, it just depends upon what you, what you particularly want to eat. Uh, another couple things that I've done instead that are basically the same macros, okay, 50 grams of protein, you know, whatever, like 16 grams of fat maybe, whatever. Uh, some, some of the ways I've done that is I mix, let's say, instead of chicken and almonds, I'll have like four eggs whole scrambled with a cup of egg whites. It's also about 50 grams of protein and about the same calories, everything coming from protein or fat, okay? Another way to do this is like four eggs scrambled with a can of tuna scrambled into it, okay? Once again, about 50 calories. So that's basically what I do. In general, uh, lately I've been having a cup of egg whites with four whole eggs and then my other three meals have been chicken and almonds, okay? Um, I take fiber. Uh, you know, sometime after my last meal, so I was like an 18, like 6 p.m. meal I'll have, and then like an hour or so after that, I will go ahead and have my fiber. It's just a simple facilium husk, sugar-free fiber supplement. Um, I do not have that with a meal, okay? The reason why I do not have that with a meal is because the fiber may interfere with the digestion of the protein you're eating, so I like to spread it out. Also, once again, if you're in a caloric deficit, depending upon how big the caloric deficit is, it doesn't make sense to force all this food down and then go longer without food. So if I eat at, let's say, 6 p.m., I have my dinner meal, protein and fat, and then like 7, 7.30, I go ahead and have my fiber. That's like another meal, okay? It fills you up, your stomach up, in between meals. So it kind of keeps you from being hungry. And then at, let's say, 9 o'clock at night when I'm kind of getting ready to go to bed at maybe 9-ish, 10-ish, then I will go ahead and I will have um, some kind of protein, like a milk-based protein, okay? So what I've done is, uh, I've been doing a lot lately, is casein protein. Unlike whey, it is very slowly digested. Unlike whey, casein protein is like very filling. It's a very milky shake. So it fills your stomach up, makes you feel like you ate something. Whey protein is like drinking a glass of water. Wow, that's great now, I'm starving now, right? Casein actually fills you up, it satiates your hunger, fills your stomach longer. Also, because it is slow to digest, it keeps you in a positive nitrogen balance longer, very important for at night because you're not eating for eight, 10, 12 hours. I mean, six hours, however long you're sleeping, okay? So you want something that slowly digests. Other things I've done is, some uh, whey protein mixed into uh, non-fat plain Greek yogurt, okay? A little bit higher in the carbs, but it's still acceptable. And uh, like I said, it's the same protein, like very low fat, very low carbs, as if I had a casein shake, okay? Casein shakes definitely recommend you guys have 
at least on hand at home, at least on hand when you travel, because there's no excuse to be missing your last meal if you have the and shake. But someone could be like, oh, well, you know, I, I fucking don't have any Greek yogurt, so I just ate a fucking Happy Meal because I couldn't drive to the store and get Greek yogurt, but I could drive to the fucking Burger King and get a Happy Meal. Yeah, okay, you, you just really don't want to fucking get in shape. Anyway, the point is, keep some in. You could use casein or you could use, like I said, Greek yogurt mixed with whey protein. Not a whole lot of Greek yogurt because that has a lot of cal a lot of carbs in it. It makes more sense to cut like, let's say 25 grams of protein from the Greek yogurt, 25 grams of protein from the whey protein. It's plain non-fat Greek yogurt, but when you mix the protein in, it kind of makes it like, you know, gives it a little bit of a taste of the protein. So it's it's actually a pretty decent thing to eat at night, or like I said, a casein shake. Either way, I also add glutamine for the same reason. It helps you with recovery, and it helps you from going catabolic at night when you're not eating anyway. So you have a slow digesting protein, plus the glutamine, keeps your muscles nice and happy and safe all night long. Okay. Um, I take uh, vitamins. I'm not gonna talk about my vitamins so much in this video because they're not a supplement particular to this workout or this diet. Just general health supplements that I take. I take them at nine in the morning with my first meal, solid meal, and at like 6 p.m. with my last solid meal, okay? Uh, you know, because fat-soluble vitamins, some of them are better if you take them with fat, so that's why I take them at those times. Um, Let's go ahead and talk about other supplements because I know people are gonna start talking, you know, they haven't yet, which is, I don't know, am I not impressive enough with my transformation or is it gonna take longer or are people just actually cool and the trolls aren't here? About like gear use. Okay, so I'm not trend out of my gourd or whatever. Okay, uh, once again, I mean, let's just be honest here. I'm doing explosive heavy cardio. The last thing I need is something that causes trend cough. I mean, come on, let's be honest. Um, what I am doing is I am on my standard TRT. I've got other videos about that. I don't want to talk about it right now, but my test replacement dose is 200 mg a week. I split it up recently. Like I said, watch my other videos about it where I'm taking a quarter of a cc every other day. Averages out to three and a half doses a week. 50 mg a dose, which means I'm actually taking 175 mg of test as opposed to 200 mg of test. That's it. Uh, fat burners, no, okay. On my low carb cutting and bulking program, I actually talk a little bit about fat burners. The reason is not because I want people to use them, I tell them not to, but I understand some people will use fat burners anyway, and I want them to use it as effectively, as productive, productively, and certainly as safe as possible. I tell them not to do it, but I tell them how to do it. When I'm on this diet right now, with the carbs pre-post workout, it means I am doing some explosive cardio. I'm like running my heart rate up as fast as I can, as high as I can, taking a short break, trying to calm down, and then I'm hitting it again. So it's like zero to 100 heart rate, slow down. Zero to 100, slow down. Zero to 100, slow down. Now, you can imagine what would happen if I was taking a lot of caffeine or, God forbid, yohimbine or ephedrine or whatever, okay? Completely forget about taking clenbuterol or T3 or whatever, any of these you know, supplements, okay? Do not do it, okay? Absolutely do not recommend you take any fat burner on this workout and this diet. Definitely do not recommend that you take any pre-workout on this workout, on this diet. If you're too tired to go to the gym, get to bed earlier, turn off fucking Netflix, fucking cancel Netflix, fucking block Netflix, fucking erase Netflix from your skull, and go to fucking bed earlier, okay? If you can't be motivated to get up out of bed, figure out why you're doing this shit. If it's not enough to motivate you to get up out of bed, you have a fucking problem, you need to fix that, but using pre-workouts as a crutch is not the fucking answer. And you know, like I said, the problem with um, you know, using a pre-workout, aside from the fact that it will screw you up, I mean, you go in and you're shaking as it is, just wait until you start doing burpees. Aside from that fact, it's just the fact that it's gonna wear off. You know, you could take a whole bunch and then you need a stronger pre-workout, then more and then more and then more. And you're either gonna end up in the hospital because you're taking 10,000 you know, fucking grams of caffeine pre-workout, or you're gonna crash because you can't possibly take any more and you're still barely getting out of bed because your body's built up a resistance to it, so you have to come off and now you're gonna spend like three weeks in a coma because you can barely move because you went from using a million grams of fucking caffeine a day down to like zero grams of caffeine a day and you crash. So anyway, I do not recommend that. Um, anyway, 
that is basically it. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm actually going to be increasing my calories as I go along because when you have more body fat, and I've spoken about this before, it's easier to burn the body fat. You know, a guy who's like very overweight can lose, you know, a lot of a lot of weight quickly. You know, like one to two percent of your body weight. If you weigh five hundred pounds, one to two percent of your body uh, weight is like five to ten pounds a week. Okay, if you are, you know. 200 pounds, okay, one to 2% of your body fat is like two to four. So like I said, it's like the leaner you get, the harder it is to actually access your body fat, use it for energy. Another thing is these workouts are actually hard. Like I'll start off doing so many burpees, then I'll increase the number of sets, then I'll increase the number of sets. Jump rope, I'll do so many sets and I'll increase and increase. With jump rope, since I'm going by time and not repetitions, the more fit I get, the more I will burn per minute. So if I burn so many calories per minute by jumping so many times in a minute and I get twice as good, now, even without increasing the number of sets of jump rope, just one minute of jump rope used to be so many jumps, so many calories. Now, if I do twice as well because I'm getting in shape, I'm burning twice as many calories, doing twice as many jumps per minute of jump rope, plus I'm doing more minutes, because you're getting better at it, so you're burning more, uh, burning more calories, burning more fat. So, leaner you get, harder it is to access your fat. You actually need to increase your calories going into a cut or a recomposition. And the same thing with the uh, with with the with the cardio. Okay, I don't. I increase the cardio up to a point as I go along, and that's another reason why I'm going to be burning more calories, and I'm going to need more more calories. Okay. Where do the calories come from? They don't come from protein because I'm already taking the optimal amount of protein for my weight. I don't take them from carbs because I'm already taking the amount of carbs for my weight, okay? And I'm also only taking carbs pre and post workout. So there's only one macronutrient left and that's fat. So what I would do is those four solid meals a day, I would add more and more and more fat, therefore more and more and more calories as I go along. And I've spoken about this before. The good thing about that is I don't like start in a small deficit and then cut more and then cut more and then cut more. First of all, the leaner you get, the harder it is, okay, to burn fat, which means you're starving and then you, what, cut calories and starve more? Plus, you're increasing cardio and cutting calories. So now you're doing like two hours of cardio a day and you're on like a thousand calories a day and you cannot possibly sustain that. You feel like horse shit. You feel garbage. Your workouts went to hell. Plus, if you go straight up to maintenance calories, you're going to get fat, but you're going to lose your mind if you don't, you know, if you try to slowly reverse diet out and increase your calories. You're probably going to just cheat in your diet and blow everything and gain 40 pounds in a week. So what do you do? Like I said, with me, I make, instead of a small deficit and more and more and more as I go along, I make a massive deficit. And like I said, the leaner I get, the harder it is to burn fat. The more cardio I do, the more calories I need. So I keep increasing my calories as I go. And the point being, I'm always at like a healthy deficit. In the beginning, a huge deficit is actually okay. You don't notice it, but the longer you go, it grinds on you. So you decrease the deficit, decrease the deficit, decrease the deficit. So at the end of my cut, instead of being like a million calories below my maintenance and being what do I do now, I'm still going to be just slightly under my maintenance. I'm basically going to be at maintenance, okay, just a little bit on the lower side. So I won't be starving. I won't have this massive rebound. You know, it will be basically a diet I can do for the rest of my life. All right. Anyway. Uh, long ass video. I'm looking at it's like 28 minutes now. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching this if you did watch the whole thing because it is a long video. I know a lot of people have been asking about it, but that is the diet that I'm on. I'll do another one about my workout. Another thing I just want to say is if you are really interested in learning about this diet, setting it up for yourself and having access to me so I can actually like approve and tell you, yes, you're doing this right or maybe adjust this a little bit. You get stuck somewhere, a little roadblock, a little plateau. I can tell you how to go ahead and increase and start moving again. So if you're interested in that, you got to check out the Raw Strength and Muscle Brotherhood. You check it out, it's $1 for seven days. You get access to all my courses, the community where you can ask questions, keep yourself accountable, form updates, you know, whatever, physique updates, uh, you know, form critiques, anything. Plus we have weekly calls. The next one is going to be Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
get on the damn call, ask me any questions you want. I will explain anything that you need. So it's a combination of like coaching and the information that you need, the program and the coaching. Raw Strength and Muscle Brotherhood, rsambrotherhood.com. Check it out. Aside from that, thank you guys for watching. Uh, about halfway through to my goal of getting down to 180 pounds with a sub 31 inch waist. We'll see how it goes. Every Monday I'm doing physique updates on YouTube and on Instagram. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram, like this video, subscribe to the channel, sign up for notifications, consider the RSA and Brotherhood, and I will see you guys in the next video.